three, two, one. Hello, Internet. Matthew here with the incredible mind of Mike Norton. Uh, Mike is, yeah, I'm sorry about that. Uh, Mike is a, a big I'm brain, an incredible creative person. He's got so many in, uh, amazing projects. Uh, and that's what the whole point of this show is right now. This whole segment is to talk to creative people about their creative uh, endeavors, uh, the creative process. And since Mike has so much going on, I'm going to let him talk a little bit about that. So, Mike, let me start not with an open-ended question, but first a thank you again for doing this. Um, and let me focus directly on where you started with what you're doing right now. Oh, thank you very much for, for having me here. Uh, it, like I said, it, we can ha also have multiple conversations in the future. I really well. appreciate it, that. Thank you. The conversation. Um, where I started... I would say would be counterintuitively in the problems that plagued me as a child. Okay. Uh, entrepreneurship in and of itself, as well as the progression of any given character, whether it be through the hero's journey, a Jungian psychology, it starts in the problem, not necessarily uh, the intrinsic character itself. It starts within the inciting incident that, that catalyzes any story. And I don't mean necessarily my own story. I mean any story universally. There's always the, the, the inciting incident with, with pertaining to uh, Aristotelian three-act story structure. So with me, it was first acknowledging what my own internal problems were and how they may have been heavily influenced by external factors. Mm -hmm. And... I would say my creativity, if you were to call it that, which you do, but I, I don't. <laughs> thank, thank you. Um, I would say it's more of an externality mm -hmm. of solving my own internal issues. And what, what we see of anything creative that comes from my mind is actually the byproduct of me facing met metaphysical dragons. So, like, for instance, um, we could take the imaginary characters of my memory palace. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, there's, it, for, the, for the internet who may not have ever heard of the memory palace technique, remember, uh, it's, it's an actual real method of memorization and organ organizing one's thoughts based on taking advantage of hippocampal memory that utilizes varying forms of either personification or uh, remembering maps in some form or the combination of the two. So, and this is just one example out of many. Mm -hmm. When challenged by a catalyzing inciting incident that would lead me to need to absorb a lot more intensive amounts of, of, of and it didn't somehow rearrange my own thought process or uh, reobserve my own thought process and, and be willing to evolve my own thought process, I would rely on the creation of a solution in order to imbibe all of this information, the externality of that being the memory palace, right? And so, so, it's, not, so it's not that I set out saying, I'm gonna create a memory palace. It's that, okay, my life has this metaphysical dragon that has come to my village right. and I need to level up as a character in order to address this, right? So, um, and, and, that, and that necessarily not, that may not necessarily be a, the plot type, it could also be a decision that I've made as a character mm -hmm. that has led into the situation. It's, it'd be a, it, 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 because there are two different ways. Something could happen to me in which I respond mm -hmm. or a decision that I make, a, a character driven story, staying in the theme of, of Hero's Breath and Jungian psychology and Campbellian uh, story analyzation. It could also be a decision that I make therein leading to uh, a series of incidents catalyzed by my own decision making that leads me to need to overcome this hurdle requiring me to level up in some way and so that's just one example yeah that's that's incredible and and by the way i asked that that this way because i wanted to kind of open up the the process from the very beginning without leading too much into exactly what you're doing first so i i, I appreciate that that underlying structure uh, so for people who don't know, uh, Mike is a physicist. He is creating his own culture. 
literally. Uh, and I, I, dude, by the way, I've been loving the armor designs that you've been uh, that you've been putting out there. Um, so I want to talk a little bit more first about the the the, the projects you, that you've gotten into as a physicist. Some of the things that you've uh, put out there. So that's something very tangible, very physical. You know, in in your other endeavors in creating a a, a culture and, and a language and uh, the armor and everything else that goes into it, uh, that's a little more expansive. Um, let's first start with the with the projects involving physics, which I honestly don't understand, obviously. But if you could just unpack that a little bit, how do you create some of the things that you do in that respect first? I look at what my insecurities are. It's the same exact thought process. Really? So, Yes, same exact thought process. If we go into, and this is, it may seem totally disconnected, but it's actually perfectly, well, at least in my mind, it's perfectly connected. Okay, yeah. We look at the development of Western civilization as mm -hmm. it's come to be. Now, there are a lot of people who would argue that, oh, Western civilization is declining, it's devolving. I'm not jumping into the, the, the left and right wing debate here. I'm just simply talking about Western civilization for what it's become as it is. Right. Yeah, um, now, I identify and acknowledge my, my European heritage as, as an interracial person. Many, many black dominant people do not. However, mm -hmm. with consideration for that, exactly following the same exact thought process of what, I, of what I said at the beginning of the conversation pertaining to the pain of my childhood mm -hmm. and wanting to carry myself with self-esteem, wanting to not have to lie or live in a fantasy pertaining to what may lead to an explosive reaction of insecurity that many black people or black dominant people are, are notorious for. Mm -hmm. And if, if we say, okay, well, Europe, my European ancestors conquered your African ancestors. I, okay, let's, let's go into why. And there are multiple angles that could, we could talk for hours and hours and hours about that. And, and okay, well, and I have a lot of content that, uh, that, that, that elaborates on that in depth, however, yeah. Let's say you have two people, two groups of people, two tribes of people that are, they start off on exactly level playing field. I mean, even though it's not necessarily the, the, the evolutionary process, but right. let's just entertain the hypothetical. It's a thought uh, experiment. Let's go from there. Yeah, just simple, an isolated thought experiment. All right, so one people progressed in a certain way. Mm -hmm. The other people progress to a certain extent, but not as quickly, and get conquered. Right? And this is, has, and this has nothing to do with race. Has nothing okay. to do. It, it, it could be two European tribes. It could be any, yeah. any tribe. That's history. Why? Let's play. Why did that occur? Play by play, mm -hmm. without trying to run away from yeah. what we may be insecure about. Like without just really be honest with ourselves as painfully and as emotionally just stabbing as that might be for yeah. someone like me. Yeah. We look at the ancient Africans. We look at the modern Africans. The modern Africa is not anywhere even remotely close to, and this is gonna offend a lot of people, it's not even oh. anywhere remotely close to other nations, particularly right. the European. Mm -hmm. And I say that with neither malice nor, nor envy nor content, never malcontent, it's just simply stating the facts. Right. Okay, well, considering the fact that I am a Westerner, Born and raised. Mm -hmm. What is it, if we were to psychoanalyze, what made me insecure as a kid that, that, that was at the foundation of a typical black inferiority complex? And a, a huge part of it is being able to look another white person in the eye and say, and, and not actually have an argument for, for the underperformance of an African army throughout history or why other blacks may have sold us into slavery, which is, it's just a lot of different controversial topics we can go into that lead to all different kinds of explosive reactions online. And then I thought, okay, well, what if we cut the bullshit mm -hmm. and just say, okay, well, if, if it was a, a myriad of technological differences, cultural differences, let's highlight what those are, isolate them, mm -hmm. and just simply improve them. Right? Don't be afraid of criticism. Don't try to restrict other people's freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. Embrace it. Yes, it hurts. But at the same time, it's also true. Right? If it, it, particularly if it hurts. Mm -hmm. So if it's true, it's, it's the same exact concept as developing anything, whether it be a, a, a product of physics or a product of, of 
anything, literature, you, 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 let's say it's just literature. You, you write something, you hand it over to an editor, and editor says, this is retarded here, spelling error there, grammatical error there. This entire character doesn't even need to be in the story. You know, and then you, you, now the writer could have an emotional reaction of insecurity and improve it, or those are not improving, reject the criticism, or they could take that criticism into consideration and make a better story. What I did was choose to go a different path. I looked at everything that made me insecure as a kid, arguments that I couldn't win, debates that I couldn't win without, without lying or warping the truth or, 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 or revising history. I said, okay, well, if, if, I, if I am different in a certain way genetically, why not just embrace the criticism and make a better story? Right? But because, every, so now that ties into everything else, okay? Armor. What would make me feel proud historically if I were to pass something down to my children? Armor. Yeah. Ebonics. I am not proud of ebonics. Yo, dog, you know, uh, so let's improve <laughs> language. Language. You see how everything sort of ties in now? Yes, so I, do. Like, I do. It, it, may, it may not, if, if you look, if, not you, but I mean, if anyone from the general common populace just simply looks at what it is, they'll see a lot of unrelated, seemingly unrelated dots, but they all stem from one core area and it's a man addressing his insecurities with, with strength, pride, and courage, not trying to revise history, forgiving history, and saying, okay, this is what I need to do to, to move forward, to genuinely evolve. And that's, that's what it is. So the rest are all externalities. And right. so, the, so I learned, I started studying physics, and, and uh, I turned entrepreneurial with it so that I could fund my own projects independently. So and if you'd like to go into... Why I chose to develop other things, I just need okay. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, so the UV cleanser, which which I'm not sure of, uh, that, that's just the start. These are all well rationalized pie in the sky ideas, armor, language, all that stuff. However, how can I sustainably progress in these cultural advancements mm-hmm. independently and self sustainably, mm-hmm. and not in a way that that's Getting me in debt, not in a way that's restricting the freedom of other people through government by proxy, taxes, that stuff. No, how can I advance my culture, gain genuine international honor and respect self sustainably without leeching off of other people or restricting other people's rights? Entrepreneurship is the way to go. So, and with entrepreneurship, you can break that down. You can reverse engineer that in such a way that traditional capital, now you could criticize. Component of capitalism, you can criticize, uh, criticize the different elements of where capitalism goes, leads, goes astray. I'm talking about puristic yeah. traditional capitalism. All puristic traditional capitalism is, is simply the monetized solution to any given problem. So if we take the, the, the same exact concept of me facing my own problems leading to innovations and inventions as an externality, then what we get is just... Okay, if I step outside of myself and start thinking about other people, what problems do they have? And how can I face their dragons for them and say, hey, are we afraid of COVID-19? Or not just COVID-19, are we afraid of any given bacteria or virus that maybe you prepared raw chicken and you're looking for something a little extra to, to disinfect your counter? Then right, that could save lives. I'm thinking, yeah. saving lives. That's a great way to win international respect for my fledgling people. And, and, and it, it, it just, it's imperative that the demonstration of my example signifies the slang of dragons of my civilization mm-hmm. in a way that contextually demonstrates, doesn't, it's not rhetoric, it demonstrates that the, that the past is genuinely forgiven. It's just simply cultural advance for what it is that anyone within Western civilization could benefit from. There's no, there's absolutely no malcontent there. It's just simple. So how can I use this thought process to better, not just my fledgling people, but the entire civilization? Um, yeah. Okay. So we could start off, right. And that's just, start, I just pulled from a hat, start off with viruses. What, are, what is one of the main dragons affecting our civilization at the time? COVID-19. Yeah. Right. So, and then by extension, other viruses, other bacteria. Yeah. Um, right. And so, so that, so thinking in terms of Jungian psychology or just a compelling uh, storytelling analyzation, Metaphysical dragon. I have now leveled up as a person by facing my insecurities. I, I feel proud to be who I am. I, I can, and, and that, that internal shift of character 
creates a paradigm shift, at least the one changing, you completely change the way you look at the world. Now that I have the X, Y, and Z pertaining to the self-esteem necessary to calibrate and clarify my own thought process, how can I help other people? Right. And that's when we get into physics, products, like the UV tons are, um, how we're, we're uh, innovating uh, conveyor belt attachments for airports to, to disinfect people's things at scale. Um, so, so as you as you put your 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 bag through the conveyor belt or any any sort of you know how when you go through the airport and they, yeah. you, it's 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 like a conveyor belt like a like a, the way a car factory would produce a car you yeah. turn the conveyor belt into a disinfection factory that you put in your bags you put in everything comes out clean it's like something you'd see in a sci-fi movie yet right. it's real. So. I love okay so there's a lot of debate now. Obviously, I don't want to get too so into too much of the sociopolitical quagmire, but okay. you said something in symbology. There was something that struck my mind in, uh, uh, symbolically that you said, you know, facing the dragons for other people, taking on other people's problems. It's more from the way you express it, less of this grandiose, I'm here to save the world, more, it sounds to me more like a man taking personal responsibility and thusly, by taking personal responsibility, it extends to his community and to the yeah. world at large. And that seems to be where a lot of the debate is in certain respects of what a man is. Historically, we've looked at men, real men, as being somebody who takes personal responsibility, responsibility for his family, responsibility for his tribe, his community, his culture, and on and on outwards. And there's a lot of, for lack of a better word, really, there's a lot of lack of that, of people willing to do that. And you've stepped up, you've already said, I'm just going to lead by example. And do you think that, I mean, obviously you're thinking so far ahead, you're talking about building your own culture. Do you think that far ahead in terms of you envisioning more and more people following your lead or you're just focused on, I'm going to do the right thing by myself and by my family, by my culture and let's see how many people follow me. Are you attached to the outcome yeah. in any way or you're just um, kind of letting, doing what you do and letting it happen? Yes, I, 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 I think, um, and I, I think it's a wonderful question. Um, the former mm -hmm. pertaining to the, the archetypal man that would like to save the world. Yes. Okay, where is that coming from? If we were to really psychoanalyze that. And and uh, I'm really psychoanalyzing. Yeah. And it, the, the the person who wants to save the world, well, save the world how, from what, in what direction, in what context, and and what makes you the call? No, I'm not you as a person. I know what you mean. Yes. What makes you the 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 person who's so righteous as to determine what that should be, right? right? So. Again, referring to Jungian psychology, are you actually as, is this person, is this archetypal person actually as moral as they would like to think that they are? Right. And I'll, I'll be totally, totally honest. I mean, I, when I was younger, mm -hmm. I had the same sort of thought process. Like, yeah, I want to save the world. I want to yeah. do this and do that. And it came from insecurity. It came from unaddressed demons yes. that were controlling me more than I wanted to believe that they were, and and um, in the process of facing these one after the other through continuous self reflection, I realized wait, and and, and by continuous self reflection, I mean hundreds, literally, no exaggeration, hundreds of thousands of pages of stream of consciousness writing. Mm -hmm. Rant. Some it may seem like rants to some people, but really to me, it's just me thinking on paper. Yeah. Um, I, 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 and again, it's continual. I'm con continually trying to check my own genuine morality. Yes. I Don't check your that. privilege, check your morality. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I realized that, okay, no, I'm wrong on X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. And I don't have the right to tell other people what to think or what to believe or how to act. Instead, if... I do have the right idea of how to quote, quote, save the world or help other people, then that should be self-evident. Yeah. Right? It, it, should, it should be self-evident and speak for itself. So in the process of me just simply handling my own life mm -hmm. and how, 
coming up with these ideas, these inventions, these, 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 these um, byproducts of self-improvement. Mm -hmm. If other people see that and just so happen to be inspired by that, then more power to them. Even if it's not learning my language, following my specifically, hey, start your own stuff. You know, do whatever, you know, make your ancestors proud. Whoever they may be, black, white, Asian, that's not, I don't care about the color. It's just simply the principle of where I am in civilization, how I got here historically, and taking full control through the development of self-awareness over what those emotions are, both light and dark, and taking back control of the will through the power of personal responsibility and saying, okay, well, this is what I, these are my, through, through self-knowledge, these are what my strengths are, these are what my weaknesses are. Let me triple down on my strengths and let me build a tribe of people to complement those weaknesses. And let's do something positive for ourselves. And then by extension, if that ends up inspiring other people to do the same, then guess what? We didn't have to tell people how to, to lead their lives or we, it just, through the ripple effect of, of genuinely improving one's own life through the demonstration of example, the entire world gets better anyhow. And there it is. And so, so, so counter, it's like, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a puzzle. It's like a Norse puzzle, an ancient Nordic puzzle. So I do read a lot of the ancient Norse, Norse texts. Yeah. Um, in the Hovamol, there is a series of, it's, it's uh, the way I depict it, the way I, I interpret it, it's Odin walking through a hall and he's, he's looking left, he's looking right, and he's seeing different Vikings and they all have different strengths and weaknesses, different vices and, and virtues. And he's making no mental notes of uh, right and wrong, what to do, what's wise, what's not wise. And uh, where I see, where I gather personal inspiration from this is in how not just not just not just the, the text in, in and of itself, but just simply you don't have to really speak much if you have the right intent. The actions always speak louder than words. And I'm referring to a specific clause in the, in, in the ancient text that uh, uh, I think we might be a little bit too esoteric for the, for the grand uh, audience of the internet, but there's a puzzle counterintuitively that pertains to what you want is not necessarily what you're going to get yeah. unless, like for, it's like for example, if you want to be an inventor, perfect example, you, you, asked, you asked me at the beginning of the conversation, where are you getting your ideas from? It's like, are you, are you trying to be an inventor? You didn't say that. It wasn't your exact words. You can like, yeah. say, did I set out to be an inventor? Did I set out to be a cultural inventor? No. I, like, there are a lot of people who say, I want to, I want to inspire people. I want to do this. And that's exactly what they go. That's what they shoot for. But they always seem to miss it. Sort of like a, a boost enlightenment. It's like, you try to go for enlightenment. You kind of miss it. Whereas if you go for the reality of what it is intrinsically, you become it indirectly. So it's not that I set out to, to become a physicist. It's not that I set out to become uh, an innovator or, or, or anything like that. Uh, the, the development of these language armor, that sort of stuff. It's that I said, what are the problems that plague me? And then all of a sudden, those are the byproducts. And then from the outside looking in, oh, this guy is a linguist. Oh, this guy is a physicist. Oh, this, right. But it, from, yeah. from the inside looking out, it's not like that. Right. Okay, I'm going to start to wrap it up here because I don't know, I don't know if I've ever done a better interview, honestly. Um, I, I've never had anybody share such inspiring and astounding insights. Uh, and we've, we've really come full circle on this. And I really, really appreciate this. So now I know people are going to be wondering about some of the details. I go, what, wait, what? He's making his own culture. He's a physicist. What, what, what? If you want more information, you're going to have to check out the website, uh, which I will be throwing it right here where I'm pointing. And of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, you go to the description. All of Mike's links are going to be there so you can check him out. You can follow him on Facebook and all the necessary social media to find out more information. Uh, but I'm pretty sure people are going to watch this interview again and again and again, <laughs> understand everything that you said. And I'll tell you personally a lot of what you said is right where I am right now in my hero's journey. I'm on my second round. Uh, I'm right coming right through apotheosis 
just waiting for that ultimate boon. Uh, and a lot of what you said was right on sync with my most recent set of experiences in my own life without going into any detail. So I really appreciate your time, uh, not just professionally, but also personally. So Mike, thank you so much again. And uh, again, guys, go check him out. And Mike, from Heroes, Breath, and Mike, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you so Take much care. for having me. Thank you, Mike. Thank you.